Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a fuel tank and how the EVAP system works. Now the purpose of the fuel and EVAP system in your car is to prevent harmful vapors from entering the atmosphere causing smog. Underneath the vehicle on the right side is where the EVAP canister is located. And now the canister is held in by two 12 millimeter pieces of rust on this side. Now I've already disconnected all of the vacuum hoses and electrical connectors from this side of the EVAP canister. And now I can go ahead and remove the canister from above the subframe. Underneath the rear seat of the vehicle is where the gas tank is located. It's a big steel tank that's held on by two straps. I'm expecting this thing to snap in a second. Oh. So here's the two 14 millimeter bolts that hold the strap onto the gas tank. And now I can remove the strap. And with the gas tank removed, you can see the big cavity left in the body of the vehicle. Now the fuel filler neck attaches up to the body and it's held in by this 14 millimeter bolt. And now we can remove the filler neck. Now over here on the inlet side of the car, we have the purge line and we've also got the air inlet line. Now the fuel and evap system consists of your fuel tank, your evap canister, a bunch of vacuum lines and hoses, and then your fuel filler neck as well as some hosing that goes out to the air intake. So just to describe what some of these hoses do, we've got this ventilation hose here that'll vent some of the building vapors inside of the fuel tank when you're fuming it into the charcoal canister. Now over here on this side, we've got your air outlet that'll vent to the atmosphere. This is the vapor pressure sensor. It'll take the reading from the tank and compare it to the atmospheric and give you a reading in voltage. Now this line here is your evap line that'll ventilate the gas tank from building fumes during normal operation. We've got a purge line that'll take harmful fumes out to the engine to get burned and this one here is a fresh air inlet that comes from the air filter. Now over here on the fuel filler neck we've got these two lines here this one's just a ventilation line but that larger one actually goes over to the tank. Now this valve here is called the onboard recovery valve or fill check valve and that's responsible for ventilating the gas tank to the evap canister while you're filling it up. Here we have an overview of the evap system in the car. Over here we have the evap canister which has two lines that go out to the front one to purge harmful vapors and the other one to bring in fresh air. Over here we have the gas tank. Now normally this will operate under some slight pressure but if the vapor builds up it can go over through the evap port to the canister where the activated charcoal can absorb some of that harmful vapors and vent it back out to the engine to get it reburned. Over here we have the fill check valve. When you're refueling the vehicle excess vapor will build up in the tank and it will go out through this valve into the canister where it will get filtered out. The excess air pressure will get drained out through the air drain valve at the bottom. Over here we have the vapor pressure sensor that senses the pressure in the tank and the vacuum switching valve. Now the ECU can use that vacuum switching valve along with the air inlet to draw a vacuum on the entire system and then monitor the pressure in the system using the pressure sensor to test to see if there's any leaks. If there's any problems in the system it'll throw a check engine light. Now over here at the tank side I'm going to disconnect the two ventilation hoses. <laughs> Broke that one off. Now in order to remove the evap line from the evap check valve there are four pieces of rust holding it on. Oh it actually turned. Now with the screws free I can remove the lid and then remove the check valve. This is the evap float and it prevents liquid gasoline from getting sucked into the charcoal canister and damaging it. Now if I remove the top lid here you'll see that there is a spring inside of here and then we've got the float that moves up and down. You can see just how that float locks off that middle valve there when it reaches the top. Now in order to remove this fill check valve, there are six pieces of rust that go around the circumference that I need to remove. It's just stripping out. So I'm going to need to grind this off, but you got to be careful with sparks. Now I'm just going to play it safe and fill up this gas tank with water. I'm going to grind off these two bolts. And now I can remove the fill check valve. This here is called the overfill check valve and what it does is as you're filling the gas tank, your gas tank is rapidly filling up with lots and lots of vapor and that needs to escape somewhere. Now when you open your gas cap, this line here is equal to atmospheric pressure and that will open a valve inside of here that will allow vapors to exit through this valve and into this big pipe towards the evap canister. Now once that vapor enters the canister, the remaining pressure will exit out here but the harmful gases will be left inside of the charcoal. I'm going to take this apart to see what's inside. And we've got a spring on the inside. That's like a slinky. A float. So now when your fuel tank is full, this float will rise and that will seal off the vapor ventilation, preventing any liquid from going inside your charcoal canister and harming it. Now I'm going to chop this open to see what's inside. So inside of the fuel check valve, we have the lid here and that exposes this diaphragm that can move up and down. Now as long as this side is at atmospheric pressure, this diaphragm can move up and down. 
That will allow vapor that builds up to move and go into the charcoal canister. Now if your fuel cap is sealed, this diaphragm will seal against here, preventing vapors from escaping. Now I'm going to cut the gas tank open to see what's inside. All right, so now with this top piece off of the gas tank, we can have a look at what's inside. Now the gas tank itself is constructed of a moderately thick sheet metal that's stamped into two halves, the top half and the bottom half, and welded together around the outside. Now inside the gas tank, we've got these baffles that run along the perimeter of the tank. Now the main job of a baffle is to prevent fuel from sloshing back and forth as the vehicle takes corners. Now obviously where the fuel pump sits would be the lowest part of the tank, whereas the highest part of the tank would be the evap check valve to prevent liquid fuel from going into the evap canister. Now inside of here is the fuel filler neck and we can see this is where the valve is, just a one-way check valve that when fluid goes in, it'll push the flap and allow it to go into the tank, but if the vehicle rolls over, the gas can escape back out the filler neck. Now the maximum level of the gasoline is actually limited by the height of the fuel fill check valve over here. The rest of this area inside of here is left for fuel vapor to build up within the tank. Now I'm going to pour out all this water. Now this here is your fuel filler neck. Now on these newer OBD2 cars, these gas caps are actually sealed and forms part of a sealed system including the gas tank. And you can see this part is just a cap. And then inside of here we have what looks like a check valve. If I remove that, you can see we've got this little filter here. There's a spring. And then this is the valve itself, followed by another spring. Now in normal situations, the gas cap is usually sealed, but we've got this safety valve here in case the pressure builds up so high in the tank that it can vent some of that pressure out of the gas cap. Now I'm going to chop this neck open to see what's inside. So inside the filler neck, you can see it's just a hollow tube that goes all the way down with a port for the ventilation. And the filler port has this plastic collar on it with the little flap that goes inside. This is the fuel tank vapor pressure sensor. It'll read the pressure in the tank that goes into here as a differential between this and atmospheric pressure. It's got three terminals here. You apply five volts to the two outside terminals and the middle terminal is your signal terminal that'll give you a voltage. The ECU will use this information in order to determine if the EVAP system has any leaks. I'm just gonna break the rust off this vacuum switching valve here. Imagine if you had to change this on the vehicle. This is the vacuum switching valve. It will take inlet air from the gas tank and vent it to the charcoal canister. It's a very simple solenoid. When you apply 12 volts, it will move a plunger outward or inward to allow or block the flow of vapors going into the canister. Now I'm just going to demonstrate how a vacuum switching valve works. You can hear when I apply 12 volts to it, the solenoid is clicking and that's just redirecting the air from the inlet to the outlet. You can hear there's no air coming out. When I apply 12 volts, you can hear that there is air coming out. So it's basically a way for the computer to redirect air in the EVAP system. This is the EVAP charcoal canister. Its responsibility is to act as a holding tank for the gasoline vapors where it gets absorbed by the charcoal before it's re-released back out into the intake to get burned by the engine. These two things here are check valves. They're basically one-way valves that allow air to go in but doesn't allow air to come out. And that's essential when running the self-diagnostic for the EVAP system. Now if I pull out these check valves here, now I'm going to chop this open to see what's inside. Now if I open up this check valve here, you can see we've got a spring and then we've got a diaphragm. So the way this diaphragm works is as air pressure builds up inside of here, we've got a little ball check valve here. When it reaches a certain pressure, it'll push up against the center of this diaphragm here and then that diaphragm will rise causing air to escape out these two ports on this side. Now if air tries to come in from this side, while the diaphragm is down, it's completely sealed and it won't be able to go back into the canister. Now I'm going to cut open the charcoal canister to see what's inside. Alright, so I got the two lids removed here on either side. Paper filter. Now this is called activated charcoal. It absorbs gasoline vapors really well and it kind of smells like it. Now they're breaking it up into these small pieces so it kind of looks like rat shit. Now I'm going to pour out all this charcoal just to show you how much is inside. There sure is a lot of charcoal. We can probably do a barbecue now. Now inside the back there we've got two foam things that are sitting on springs. Now the spring with the pad will put some pressure onto the charcoal to make sure it's compact and there's not too much air in between it. Alright, now inside of here you'll notice that there's actually two chambers and they're separated by a wall in between here. And that's to allow the vapors to enter from this side. It goes to the back. There's a tiny gap where it can go through and then exit out this way allowing the maximum surface area of the vapors to be absorbed through the charcoal. And that's pretty much how the EVAP system in your car works. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some charcoal to barbecue for dinner tonight.